What's going on everybody? My name is Ian and welcome to another video of IR Sculpts. Today I'm going to show you how to use dynamic thickness to prep your models for 3D printing. Let's do this. All right, everybody. So in today's video, I'm going to walk you through my process on how I actually use dynamic thickness to slice all my models for 3D printing. I have this model here that I sculpted off of the amazing Randy Bishop, such a great concept artist. Links are in the description to his stuff, so please go check him out. But before we get to the fun part, which is the slicing and dicing part, what we're going to actually do is set our scene scale. And this is super important because we want to make sure that all of our cuts throughout our model are as consistent as possible. So what we're going to do is we're going to come here to insert on our subtool menu, and we're going to pick 3D cube. The way Scale Master works, which is what we're going to be using, it actually sets the entire scene to scale based on the subtool that's selected. A cube is even on all sides, so this is the perfect tool, in my opinion, to use when setting scale. Okay, so now that we got our cube in our scene, what we're going to do is we're going to come up to Z plugin, and we're actually going to set scale. And then from here, we're going to pick 2 millimeter. I like to use millimeter for 3D printing because it seems to be the most popular uh, measurement system. However, you can use any uh, measurement you like, from centimeters to inches to feet. It is up to you. So we're going to go ahead and select millimeter. And then we're going to go back to Z plugin. We're going to go down to one of our sliders. It doesn't matter which one because we're going to, uh, they're going to be all the same size. We're going to type in 25.4, which is the equivalent equivalent of one inch. And then we're going to go ahead and say resize subtool. You might get this error talking about values larger than a hundred. Don't worry about it. Just go ahead and say, okay. Now, once your scene has actually rescaled or resized, with our cube still selected, we're going to go ahead and come back up to Z plugin, set scene scale. This is to just ensure that our scene is actually 25.4 millimeter, which we could see it is right here. So we're going to go ahead and click that. And now our scene is set. Okay, guys, now the fun part can begin. Now that the whole scene is set, we're going to go ahead and use a plain 3D to create our custom keys and then use dynamic thickness to cut our model. So what we're going to do first is we're going to go ahead and hide our one inch cube because we really don't need that. And we're going to go to insert here on the tool subtool palette side and we're going to pick plain 3D. We're going to back out by hitting F on the keyboard, which will just quickly zoom out. And if we hit shift F, we can actually see all of our edge loops and poly groups. But as you can see here, this is a massive poly, uh, plane to work with based on the size of our model now. So what we're going to do is actually come here to geometry. And we're going to Z remesh this. I would like to turn adapt off because I just feel it doesn't work the best for me. We're going to pick half and then we're going to go ahead and hit Z remesher about two times. So we'll hit it once and there we go. So now we have uh, some decent edge loops to work with. Now what we're going to do is we're actually going to scale this down. So let's scale it and position it in a place that we think is going to work for our cut. And in this case, we're going to put it maybe right about there. If you guys would like me to create another video on how to do more seamless cuts, especially on humanoid characters, just feel free in the comment section down below to let me know, and we can actually do another video based on that. But for tutorial purposes and how this works, we're just going to go ahead and do a generic cut. So now that this is in a good spot, we're going to go ahead and turn on transparency so that we can see through our model, which I think is the most important, and then make sure that we just position this and scale this down to, uh, to kind of fit our needs. And that looks good. So we're going to go ahead and turn off our gizmo, hitting Q on the keyboard. And then we're going to pick our Z model or brush. So come up here to brush. We can type in type Z for a quick shortcut and we could pick model brush. Now that we have that, what we're going to do is hold alt down and we're just going to pick a couple of our uh, faces on our plane. And something like that, like that looks pretty good. Let's actually pick these two right there as well. Now we're going to hover over face, hit space on the keyboard, and we're going to go ahead and hit extrude, and we're going to hit polygroup all. This is so that we can actually pull the key out. So we're going to go ahead and grab that face and just extend this out. Now, of course, if it is sticking out like it is right here, you can always hit control Z, hit alt again if you selected faces that you don't want, and uh, deselect those, and then you can go ahead and pull that back out, just like that. So now we have the starting of our key. From here, I'm going to go ahead and just mask off this area right here. I have a quick area for mask lasso, but of course, if you hold down control and then you come up here to the top, you could select mask lasso. Come here, just select this top part right there. 
And then if we hit control tap on the side, it'll actually invert that mask. From here, we're gonna hit W on the keyboard, which will bring up our gizmo one more time. Hold Alt and actually click this location button to recenter that to the top. From there, we're gonna go ahead and scale that down like such. Doesn't have to be a whole lot, just enough. And that's good. Hit Q again to take her uh, to get rid of the gizmo, and then we're gonna clear our mask, hitting Control, and then just kind of swiping. Okay, guys, now we have our custom key almost built. And what we're going to do is make a few changes before we actually get to the cutting process. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit solo and we're going to add just a few supporting edge loops to our key to ensure that it's a good cut. So we're going to come here. If you still have Z model or brush selected, we're going to just click this uh, edge face here and we're just going to add a few edge loops along the side of this, uh, of this key to ensure that it's supported and that we have nice uh, a nice fall off on the edges you can adjust this however you want and you can really take your time making a really nice key but for tutorial purposes we're just going to go ahead and throw a few just like that and then if we hit d on the keyboard it's going to display dynamic subdivision and what dynamic subdivision is is it's basically just showing you what your model would look like if, uh, when you subdivide without actually subdividing, which is the best part for it. So now that we have that, we can go ahead and turn off our polyframe and we can see that we have a really nice edge right here. And the best part about this is that if we hit double, which is down here in the sub tool, display properties, and double right there, there it is, almost lost myself. Um, you could see if we turn it off and on, it actually, what it does, by using a plane, it allows us to have both the male and the female cutting side at the same time. So what we're going to do now is we're going to zoom out, uncheck solo, uncheck uh, our transparency, and now we're going to finish making the key. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up to geometry, we're going to come up to dynamic subdivision, which is right here, and then we're going to come to thickness. This is the important part. We're going to type in 0.002 to 0.003 millimeters, which is what I find to be the most accurate for uh, cutting 3D printing. And we're going to hit enter. And as you can see now, it's kind of given us a little bit of a thickness. However, if we turn dynamic off, you can see that the thickness isn't applied. What we need to do is actually apply this thickness or the trick doesn't work. So we're going to put on dynamic. We're going to hit apply which now will give us actual geometry. And from here, we're gonna go back to our sub tool. And as you can see, I put my model in a folder, which I highly recommend. I find folders to be a lot cleaner, so that's why I use them. From here, we're actually going to make sure that we select on our key, the subtraction icon, which is this one right here. Uh, when using live Boolean, this is what you want to make sure that it's actually going to cut against your model. From there, we're going to go to live Boolean. And as you can see now, we have the key that appears to be cutting our model, but it's not cut yet. We need to do one more step. From here, we're going to go to the top of our folder, go to this little cog wheel, and we're going to type in or select Boolean folder. Okay, so now that what we have here is we have a merged and cut version of our model. And as you can see here, there is a cut which indicates it worked. If we turn on our polyframe, you could see here that it's still one main poly group, but on the inside we now have another poly group. If we basically turn on auto groups, so if we come down to poly groups, click auto groups, it'll now group both of them. If you don't get different poly groups, then the model still merged together and the cut didn't work. But in this case, it worked out perfectly. So we can hit Control Shift and tap our model sub tool, and we can go split hidden. And now you can see here we have our model and it is perfectly cut. Okay, everybody, hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. Please, in the comment section down below, let me know if this process works for you or if you actually have any other ideas that you use through your own prepping process for 3D printing. Again, thank you so much. And as always, don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification. And if you enjoy this kind of content, you can actually see me doing this live on Twitch TV. All that stuff is in the description down below. Again, thank you guys so much, and I'll talk to you later.